Hello, we everybody, and good morning, and welcome. Yes, and welcome back for another NGIOT uh, webinar. Uh, as you know, we have been trying to push uh, our activities also during the COVID-19 uh, crisis, and uh, many of you have been with us also in the past webinars during the uh, last two months, basically. We have uh, gained a lot of insight through these uh, webinars, and we are very happy to have today with us uh, Emmanuel Darmois, which has done a terrific work in the Etsy Specialist Task Force 547. Uh, and he will present to us uh, uh, some of the work uh, and the achievement that this task force uh, uh, has uh, been able to reach. These are key activities in the context of NGIOT, especially Work Package 2, that we are organizing uh, with the support of Artiman Solution Institute of Italiano Privacy, my colleague. Uh, Francesco Caparelli and uh, Alicia Odino are here with us. I have to say that this is a webinar uh, which is part of a series. We are trying to coordinate with the IoT security cluster and also with the other CSA Open DAI. So we look forward to the webinar today. As you know, all our webinars are registered and are available on our website. And we are also happy to share with all those that participate the slides for our speakers, which then, of course, uh, will also be reflected in the kind of work that we do for the deliverable. So everything will be available for further discussion among the wider uh, ecosystem, since this is also one, of course, uh, of our goals. So uh, if you don't want to be registered, I have to say that uh, you can leave the, the registration of the, of the webinar. Uh, and without further ado, I give the floor to my colleague Francesco, which is a co-organizer, and then we give the floor to Manuel. Francesco from Institute of Italian Privacy, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. I would really like to thank you all for joining us. And uh, I would really like to thank you, Alicia Odino, as a representative for uh, the team of the Italian Institute for Privacy for the excellent job that we are trying to carry on in organizing these webinars, which are a unique opportunity for our community of projects in the European and IoT field in order for us to have discussion, confrontation about uh, best practices, standards, and everything that uh, can uh, enhance our cooperation in the security cluster and uh, in AJ5. So I don't want to, um, I, I would like just to give the floor to Emmanuel in order to start the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, well, brief introduction of myself. Uh, I am uh, working on a, a standardization for quite some time, uh, largely in the context of Etsy, but not only. Uh, I have been uh, working on IoT since uh, now quite a number of years, uh, though I have uh, before worked on other topics related to uh, standardization, uh, like, uh, I don't know, Smart Grid, for instance. Um, and now uh, I'm also involved in uh, in a new uh, specialist task force uh, with uh, Etsy as a, as a STF leader uh, dealing with uh, artificial intelligence and IoT systems. So uh, I will especially uh, today talk about uh, the Etsy specialist task force five or seven. I call the um, presentation. Uh, holistic approach to IoT system for all stakeholders. That's the general approach that we try to follow in uh, the STF. And I also call it a brief introduction because there is, as you will see, a lot of material available from uh, the specialist task force, and it would be very challenging to uh, make a presentation uh, in a in a very short time. Uh, that would uh, be uh, enough to present uh, the variety of results. By the way, we had a seminar uh, in February in Brussels organized by the uh, uh, European Commission, and we spent one day on this topic. So sorry in advance for those who've been attending that presentation. You will know nothing new. Uh, for the other ones, I, I hope I will be able to uh, introduce you to the work and uh, hopefully answer uh, some of the questions uh, that you will have uh, at the end. W when I say some of the questions, it may be uh, indeed only some of them, because in some case, 
Uh, I'm not a specialist of all the topics that have been addressed by the specialist task force, and I may uh, have to defer uh, the answer uh, to um, one of my colleagues or to uh, the documents that are attached to the work of this specialist task force, and that are not only presented in this uh, uh, webinar, but also available uh, with uh, the hyperlinks uh, that are in the presentation. So uh, let's go uh, and start the presentation. Well, I, I usually start the presentation by the horrible figure that's on, on top of the screen, uh, which I, today I decided to reduce to the maximum. But basically, the idea is that uh, IoT is horrible. IoT is horrible because uh, it's a complex domain. And when you look at the picture that there, it's IoT seen by Etsy and, and lots of uh, uh, components, lots of possible uh, application domains. And then you multiply that complexity by the one of the uh, IoT standard landscape and uh, you may recognize the IoT uh, landscape behind in the picture. And if you multiply uh, one complexity by the other one, it's really uh, becoming very difficult, and in particular, very difficult for the non-specialist. So the idea of the STF uh, was to try to address this, uh, this complexity. And uh, what uh, we have been uh, having in mind uh, during the, the, the preparation of the, uh, the STF was that uh, we had to be able to deal with some of uh, the important uh, aspects of what are the IoT systems. And from this standpoint, uh, the um, angles of, of uh, attack we wanted to, to, to characterize in this STF and to make it maybe a little bit different from uh, the traditional standard work, where that we would like to talk about stakeholders uh, in and stakeholders and stakeholders to some extent, because uh, we didn't want to restrict the work uh, only to uh, the delight of the, the, the usual members of the standardization community. And try to, to make sure that whatever we do would be available to some extent to non-specialists uh, that could try to understand uh, what uh, we are uh, addressing in terms of uh, technical strategy and how uh, are going to be uh, dealt with some elements that we uh, deem important. Uh, Further, we've been specializing to some extent uh, the STF to only a sub uh, uh, class of problems of uh, IoT in general, uh, though it's already quite a lot. Uh, we're talking about interoperability, we're talking about privacy and security mostly as the three main topics, uh, but that's already covering a very broad range of issues. Uh, suddenly, we could have been talking about data more specifically, but that was not part of the uh, of the, the, the remit of the STF. So, in other terms, we've been trying to be open to uh, the, the um, stakeholders uh, that um, might want to have a look at that without being specialist, and we've been trying to uh, guide our work uh, through. Uh, consideration of those stakeholders and the roles that they may play in an IoT system from, uh, well, across the overall life cycle of the IoT system from uh, the definition up to uh, the commissioning. And uh, we have been uh, also working on uh, aspects that we believe important, uh, like uh, uh, taking into account the reference architecture, or um, even more importantly, uh, and I think it's also one uh, main flavor of the uh, STF results, we have been uh, working on the provision of guidelines and teaching material. So in a sense, we will describe technical reports, but those technical reports have been really focused on the definition of 
guidelines that can be used by the stakeholders and every stakeholder in support of decision and in support of uh, usage of IoT in, in, in the systems they want to, 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 to set up. And we've been developing also teaching material uh, in support of uh, those who want to have access to uh, a minimum limit, uh, minimum level of understanding of the topics uh, uh, that we have addressed. And this teaching material has been dealing with uh, two of the, I would say, most complicated topics uh, that we've been dealing with, uh, namely privacy and security. So it's a long introduction, but uh, I think it gives you uh, an idea of the perspective we've been taking for uh, the, the, the progress of the STF. Before I go further, I think um, those who, who, who know me the, know that I can speak for six hours without interruption. Uh, don't hesitate to interrupt me at any time and ask questions. I think it will be uh, even better than to wait for uh, the end of the presentation. This being said, let's go into uh, the depths of, uh, of uh, the, the, the analysis. So uh, one thing that I always recall, uh, begin standards for for uh, for a long time now almost 15 years uh, standards are uh, very important they are, they are not the center uh, of uh, the, the of the world if you if you start to deal with iot solutions because basically you have to deal with a very large number of of issues uh, some of them are are listed there and um, I'm not going to develop that, uh, but uh, as I already said, we, we were trying to understand how to put the stakeholders at the center of the stage. So, quick introduction. Uh, we have been uh, doing this STF that it was funded by the European Commission uh, and supported by the, the ETSI machinery. Uh, an STF uh, st uh, specialist task force is uh, gathering a number of specialists that have been recruited uh, through an open uh, recruitment process by ETSI, uh, based on uh, well, uh, number one, uh, the the um, description of uh, the expectation of the STF, and number two, uh, how uh, the um, profiles of the experts are matching uh, the the expectations of the STF. So, ten STF experts have been um, selected, and we've been running the STF for in two years from march uh, 2018 to february 2020 so it was a long uh, uh, undertaking uh, that uh, has led to uh, quite some um, number of results and also uh, that has allowed us to have a shifting perspective in the sense that uh, between the time uh, we started the STF and, and at the time we ended up with the final results, uh, some uh, uh, change of perspective or evolution of perspective of, of IoT has been starting to also uh, inform the way we've been working. I, I would cite two examples. The, the, the role of data has been really becoming uh, very central to the definition of IoT systems. And uh, we've been addressing that also uh, through different angles like uh, data uh, protection in the privacy aspects or, or in, uh, in, in, in the semantic interoperability. Uh, and another aspect, uh, I would say uh, AI uh, uh, has been emerging in the meantime, but that one has not become part of our, uh, our work. So I, I'm not going to uh, detail the rest of the slides because I think I've been already quite uh, uh, talking about that. What we have done in the end is two set of things. One is seven technical reports that have been published last year. Uh, two about privacy, two about security, two about semantic interoperability, and one about standardized IoT platform. On privacy, we have uh, the, the, I would say, the main report that's uh, supporting the guidelines and best practices and the teaching material report and in security, same structure. Those two teaching material uh, reports, they are part of the same report, so part one, part two, uh, but they are available separately. 
on semantic interoperability, we've been dealing with two topics. One is uh, dealing with uh, how can we make semantic interoperability more applicable in the industry? Uh, how is it possible to uh, provide guidelines that would support that? And the other part of the work was uh, to explain, and that's also done in the context of Etsy, uh, where plug tests are something very important. Uh, um, how can we uh, provide uh, also guidelines for preparation of plug text that would support in, uh, semantic interoperability across a variety of platforms and, and uh, testing situations. So, and uh, the only report that was standalone uh, with no uh, other attached uh, uh, report is the one on the standardized IOC platforms. Uh, you can see on the right the name of the um, uh, well, the numbering of those uh, technical reports. If you click uh, on the link, uh, you can open uh, the uh, related uh, TR. In the end, uh, we we have been adding. Uh, that was not uh, planned at the beginning of the uh, of the STF, but uh, uh, after this uh, series of discussion with the. Um, uh, with the European Commission, Frank, Rolf, etc., we've been uh, considering that it would be useful to have a, uh, a document that is a bit different from the uh, technical report. That would be more grand public, as we say in French, more directed to, uh, well, the stakeholders that uh, I was uh, already referring a number of times. Uh, basically, the idea is that we would like to uh, present a high-level view of the report, uh, try to understand what are the questions that have been addressed, uh, make a summary of the guidelines, uh, talk about the lessons learned in a way that can be dealt with uh, uh, relatively simply by those who read the report. You don't need to be an hyper-specialist of something to, to deal with that. And um, the, the, um, the report is not just a summary of what you can find in, in the other ones, but it is also based on the analysis of a, a number of uh, uh, use cases in, uh, in, in, in four uh, different uh, domains uh, that uh, serve as an illustration of the um, guidelines uh, that, that are provided uh, across the report. So that's the general structure. Now we can go a little bit more in details. The, uh, I don't believe I can um, go that much in detail. I have uh, probably a dozen slides, uh, but I'll try to be as uh, illustrative as possible. So talking first about the privacy aspects, uh, we, we have addressed privacy uh, with um, two, uh, two angles. Uh, first of all, we have considered that the, one of the issues of IoT is that it uh, is hyper-connectivity and distributed control. And when you consider that an IoT system is by nature this kind of system, then it's really uh, important to understand how uh, privacy can be dealt with in this context and how it's possible to, 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 to make the, um, uh, uh, the appropriate safeguard and to address the challenges. So what we have tried to do in this uh, report is to have a, a, a user-centric approach, a human-centric approach. And you can recognize uh, uh, the picture that uh, uh, dear to the art of Arthur Legal, and that was actually at the core of uh, our work. Uh, by the way, the expert who took uh, uh, in charge uh, privacy uh, as, as a leader was uh, from, from Arthur Legal. And uh, that was one aspect. And we, we had the other aspect, which was to consider that privacy concern should not be considered as a well, something that has to be dealt with when everything has been done. Uh, okay, let's uh, add a little bit of privacy painting on top of the the IoT system. Uh, but no, if you, if we want to be really addressing the uh, the challenges, in particular the challenges of regulation, we have to to really put privacy at the heart of uh, of IoT. Uh, so the 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 work done. In in summary, I'm not going to describe that. 
you can see that on, on the slides afterwards, but basically this is describing what, it, what is in each of the report. And I make a, a special um, picture on the right that you will find in other slides. We have in the special report uh, developed a list of uh, frequently asked questions. And I give here one example uh, of those uh, questions related to privacy. So there are many more. I'm not going to describe them uh, uh, in details in these slides, but if you want to have an idea of the questions that we've been addressing, the kind of answer uh, we've been providing, which, it, which are the eye level answers that I was mentioning before, uh, you can find that in this document together with further reference to other documents that can be, in this particular case, just one of the reports of the STF, but in other cases, we provide a reference to other material. So the, the interesting thing in, in all the work that we've been doing is that uh, we came up with uh, some uh, takeaways uh, that, that are uh, summarized in the, um, in, in the report. And uh, here again, there are lots of things that we could be discussing. Uh, but uh, I, I would say that if we, if we look at privacy, we have uh, uh, three main uh, uh, sets of takeaways. One is uh, the first one uh, on, in blue uh, on, on, on the left is is related to uh, uh, let's say uh, how privacy has really to be taken into account uh, as a mainstream activity in uh, the um, development of IoT systems, uh, which means you have to uh, to have uh, the appropriate technical and organizational measures in support of that. Another uh, another aspect which is very important in the in 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 the uh, in the report is the impact of GDPR. It was particularly important because GDPR has been really uh, uh, very much uh, uh, a challenge, an issue in in in, in IoT systems during the, the course of the uh, of the STF. And uh, we, we here again we we make a number of recommendations that are related to the fact that, well, number one, GDPR requirements are mandatory and uh, it, it, it is uh, necessary to have an approach uh, that is not just, um, well, mere box ticking exercise is written here. I would say putting a lot of uh, uh, GDPR painting on top, but basically the idea is no, it, it, the, the uh, GDPR re really requires an effective protection of personal information and a real one. And uh, the, uh, the, 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 the final findings that we had from the, uh, from the analysis was that um, GDPR is clearly highlighting the role of standards but uh, we have not been uh, identifying during the course of the work that it would re require the creation of new standards per se. So there, 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 there is no uh, additional need uh, at this point in time for, for that, uh, because, well, basically the, the, um, the, the, the bulk of the problem is really to understand how to, to, to apply what we already have, uh, and, and that's the, the, the real challenge. Hence the uh, uh, more detailed guidelines that you, you can find related to that. Uh, I also mentioned the, um, uh, the example uh, of uh, uh, the, the analysis of 1M2M architecture. Uh, why 1M2M? Actually, because the, um, the, the STF was done in its in the context of uh, the technical committee Smart M2M, uh, which is uh, uh, one of uh, the organizations that are developing the 1M2M architecture. And, and we've been trying to uh, also use the, the STF as, as an opportunity to, to uh, clarify, complement, and, and the, the, the one M, M2M architecture, even in terms of, uh, of simply of guidelines. So hey, that was privacy. Yes. That one? Yeah, so of course, this is an important statement, the fact that uh, the current set of standards 
are sufficient. Okay, so uh, I would agree and not agree. So I would agree in the fact that if you look at the list of standards, probably, and you make the mapping, you think that it's sufficient. And uh, and in, in the sentence you are trying to mention here, I think goes into that direction. But the, the problem today is that those standards are not aligned. So if I'm buying them and I put them together, I'm still uh, scratching my head uh, how I'm going to do it. So uh, we have an action which is still at a standard level, how to agree to uh, align the things. And you are part of uh, actually some initiative with me on those things. So we need to go that direction. And the second thing I want to mention, but again, maybe it's also there when you say it is, it's that actually what about ecosystems and how the the organizations will uh, agree together how to work it together. Okay, and this is again I have to say if you look at the details, probably there are standards uh, on, on those things, but again, uh, people are maybe not aware that those standards are existing and do not know how to use it. Yes, uh, well, I, I agree with you, uh, which is not contradicting what I said uh, uh, about the creation of new standards. I mean, the, 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 the real challenge we have, and I think it was one of the, the, the reasons why we had this FTF and one of the findings, and is the, the, the existing set of standards and regulation is enough, but uh, just coping with it is complicated and requires uh, collaboration and if possible also maybe simplification it requires definition of more explicit methodologies uh, so in, in, in a sense this is not new standards but this is not the end of the work that has to be done around that because uh, clearly if we want to make things um, applicable uh, this is something that needs to be done within the, uh, the uh, standardization community make it more simple and applicable and it's not just related to privacy, by the way. We'll have exactly the same of uh, kind of issues uh, related to semantic interoperability. Okay, so Emmanuel, maybe I can... Yeah, I think you can move forward, Emmanuel. Okay, I was about to suggest that. So, uh, second batch of thing is, 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 is security. Uh, so we 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 had to deal with uh, the, the this uh, notion that security uh, is an important aspect of the IoT system, but we also had to deal with the fact that it's very difficult uh, to uh, address security and privacy in an unrelated manner. They are uh, they are related, and if you also consider that. Uh, uh, safety is something that has to be considered uh, for, for many IoT systems. This notion of trust is something that is, is very important and uh, we have been uh, looking at that in particular in the, uh, in the security technical reports, uh, looking at what trust in IoT is involving. And, and the interesting point that I always make is that we started uh, the work with different views within the team about uh, IoT security and in particular the, 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 the expert in charge of developing the report, Scott Katzo, uh, has probably started a little uh, more than the rest of the team with the assumption that uh, um, ICT security consideration would apply 99% uh, to, uh, to IoT. Uh, whereas in the in the end uh, we, we had a, a more balanced uh, view of things and trust in IoT has some specificities with uh, respect to uh, ICT security in general and 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 that is uh, in part related to uh, the complexity of the IoT networks and it's also related to uh, the fact that in the IoT networks you have uh, a, a number of uh, elements of devices that are both hardware and software and those two aspects uh, also shape the way uh, security can be can be handled uh, the final line is 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 also uh, outlining something which is uh, inherent to um, the difficulty of security in in, in iot today uh, which is that uh, security is more or less at the level of the least trusted element in, 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 in the IoT system. And uh, one of the issues uh, that we have today 
uh, is to uh, make sure that uh, the least trusted element is not cast catastrophically untrustable. So what what we did uh, with this report is to is to to, to address the, uh, the 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 security challenge uh, to uh, consider uh, what are the issues uh, specific to IoT. Uh, and, and one of them is that IoT is very open and, and vulnerable, may, maybe more than some of the uh, the, the other uh, systems we can deal with in ICT. Uh, and uh, also because IoT is not the, the only model that has to be considered if you talk about security, you also have to understand how um, a, a number of the other components uh, uh, related to the cloud, for instance, uh, the, related to the distribution of services between the cloud and the edge, etc., cetera, uh, have an impact on uh, the security of the IoT system at large. So uh, we, we had an approach which, tried, which was basically uh, uh, to, to, to look at the uh, devices, how uh, we can deal with the, the those which are highly risk adverse versus lo those that are less, and try to understand how uh, the security principles that have been defined in ICT uh, would apply to IoT, so general security guidance and best practice, and uh, let's say security guidance related to uh, cryptography in particular. Uh, we we add this uh, uh, these reports that have been dealing with uh, those topics, and in the end uh, we have exactly uh, the same uh, um, structure than for privacy. The, the the main TR that's dealing with the uh, with IoT uh, with uh, the how it's going to be addressed uh, from the different angles have been uh, uh, clarifying in the previous slides. Uh, the, the, the other thing is that the um, uh, teaching material is showing it, a lot of material, very useful material, uh, hundreds of slides to some extent, that will allow uh, addressing uh, many of the angles of uh, security in, in, a, in, in a manner that could be helpful for, for, for uh, really non-specialists. And some of the questions uh, related to uh, the frequently asked questions uh, about security can be also found in the special reports. I've put them here, two of them, uh, but uh, there are many more in the in the special report. So, third topic is about semantic interoperability, and semantic interoperability is one of the two aspects of interoperability that we've been dealing with in the STF, and um, Basically, the, the 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 challenge we had is that semantic interoperability is a very promising technology. It's clearly uh, something that uh, the the IoT community would not challenge. But what is very difficult to to uh, come up with is to make sure that it's not just a lab thing, something which would be um, developed again and again in the academic field but never used in the industry. So what we have been trying to do in this report is to understand how we can apply uh, a certain number of guidelines to ensure that uh, semantic interoperability may become more mainstream in industry. And I would say that uh, the approach that uh, I, I mentioned after the question of Antonio on, on, on privacy is, is probably going to be the same. Uh, one of the challenges of uh, uh, the uh, IoT community related to semantic interoperability is clarification, simplification, alignment of standards, and and this is something that is is uh, will have to be done. So in this uh, uh, STF, we're providing um, guidelines for uh, in support of of the, the the program of work that's ahead of us. So we, we have been doing for semantic interoperability uh, two reports. One is the guidelines for semantic interoperability in the industry. That's uh, addressing those issues uh, in, in particular. And we had the guidelines for semantic interoperability plug test, how to do uh, semantic interoperability testing 
uh, how to cal clarify which kind of test configuration are useful and should be uh, um, clarified in terms of uh, how to set up a test uh, policy. And we have been providing an example of, uh, of potential test scenarios uh, in this respect. The uh, questions addressed and the key takeaway, we have been uh, really looking at how uh, semantic interoperability can be supported by the IoT platforms. And this is also directed to the, 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 the work that we've been doing on the IoT platforms that I will describe afterwards. Uh, the the um, uh, semantic interoperability has to be uh, uh, supported. Uh, so we have been trying to outline the, the, the answer to the main questions that those who would like to adopt semantic interoperability in uh, the development of their industrial, industrial in the sense of industry level, industry grade, uh, semantic uh, uh, IoT system, those who would like to adopt semantic interoperability in this kind of system would have to ask themselves. So we've been trying to um, answer those questions, identify the, the inhibitors, uh, focus on the ontology problem because this is where a, a large part of the, the issues are concentrated today. There is no generally accepted upper ontology. Uh, it's very many, uh, fragmented in, in many knowledge niches, and uh, th this work of alignment and simplification is going to be one of the critical factors of success for, for semantic interoperability. And I suppose that uh, in NGIoT, this is going to be one important uh, aspect of, uh, of the work and, and the coordination work in particular that will have to be dealt with. So the last part of the work is, is about standardized platforms. So uh, the, the basically the, the what we've been trying to, to do there is, is trying to understand if there is one um, way to, uh, to, to benefit from all the work, all the open work that has been done around the platforms uh, in the development of real life IoT systems. In other terms, are we condemned to uh, rely on proprietary platform or is platforms, or is there a way to um, use elements of open uh, platforms in the definition of industry grade uh, um, IoT systems? And so uh, we have done this uh, uh, analysis of the standardized platforms with the idea of understanding uh, what are the the the, the challenges, uh, and also uh, what are the available platforms uh, that would support this approach? In, ter in other terms, we also had to understand what is a standardized platform. So, what what we have been doing in this uh, uh, particular report uh, is making an analysis of the uh, uh, landscape complementing uh, those which have been do done already in uh, the um, uh, in the community uh, for instance by uh, the IoT EPI uh, providing a, a, a classification of the uh, uh, different kind of platforms standardized open source proprietary whatever trying to understand how those platforms can be uh, addressed by a number of uh, criteria for choice and we've been taking the example of uh, industrial IoT uh, to address uh, this choice of platform on a, uh, on a specific example uh, industrial IoT being an example of a domain in which the requirements on uh, platforms are very strong and uh, the role of proprietary platform are a, a priori more, uh, uh, is a priori more important than uh, anywhere else. So how could we benefit from standardized uh, platform in this context? And, and that's, uh, uh, that was a specific use case. And uh, we, we have been doing the same with this uh, than uh, with the other report, ask a number of questions, provide uh, uh, answers. And in the terms of uh, 
of uh, the, the main takeaways we had from, from this work, it, it still is complicated uh, to use standardized platform because there are not many of them. The landscape is still very fragmented. There, you still find hundreds of platforms, even if uh, hundreds of platforms have already died, there are still a lot of them. Uh, but it's easily understood that proprietary platforms are not a panacea. As, as soon as you want to have uh, interoperability between platforms, I take the extreme example of smart cities as uh, the, the domain in which the requirement from, for interoperability be, between platforms may be the most uh, uh, stringent uh, set of requirements. Uh, but uh, you, you cannot really rely on proprietary platforms, even if those proprietary platforms can develop ecosystems in which the adaptation of the platform to other uh, ecosystems may be part of the, 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 the work. Uh, the adoption of an open platform may be a more simple solution uh, for the resolution of the interoperability platform uh, um, uh, challenge. So the, these are mostly the, the, the lessons learned, uh, and we come up with uh, with an analysis of the standardized platform, provide some of them, and uh, we will also make a, a recommendation about uh, 1M2M, which was uh, one of the key platforms addressed. Uh, as I said, we, we had a, a special focus on 1M2M in this STF. Okay, and, and this is my last slide. We have finished the work. Uh, we have done as much as we could of uh, dissemination. We will continue to do that. And today, I hope uh, that I will uh, have contributed to that. Uh, we had a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, contribution. We had, a, uh, uh, we expect, provided results that we hope will be uh, carried over in, uh, in um, uh, the, the IoT community. Uh, by now, we, we will certainly continue to, to work in uh, some of the um, uh, some of the uh, organizations that are listed here uh, to make this happen. Voilà. And uh, you can find um, a little more information and access to the deliverable on the uh, on, on the portal page that's documented on this uh, on this uh, uh, hyperlink. And this is the end of my presentation. Many thanks, Emmanuel, uh, from myself and from the organizers, and I think from everybody. I would have many questions, but before I ask you something, I want to leave the floor open for any Q&A from the floor, since I uh, see that there are people that definitely maybe want to intervene. So I leave the floor open. Just feel free to intervene on the presentation. Antonio, I have a two yes, questions. Yes, Antonio. Yes. Okay. The first is uh, on standardized platform. Obviously, uh, it's a complex uh, world, and uh, I my question is uh, that probably we are not in such a document. We are not uh, uh, recommending uh, one specific solution, but we could, uh, or probably you you are doing that. Uh, uh, describes uh, attempts that seems to work and go into the right direction because. Uh, at the end of the day, the market will decide that you have OASC that is going to this minimum interoperability mechanisms. Maybe it's uh, in integrated. Of course, 1M2M is the one the answer. So um, that's the first question. So how you, you position, you will position your, 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 your work there. My second question is maybe more for you or for, for the commission for Etsy is uh, that uh, uh, you see uh, STF is doing a really interesting bulk of work, wealth of work, really. Uh, I, I'm quite impressed, but, but uh, actually we, we miss one thing, which is when the documents are available, uh, sh shouldn't we have like a, a inquiry, a, a period of comments from actually uh, the, 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 the bigger uh, ecosystem, so European projects, the people, like what, what we have in NIST, so that actually, and then the, this could uh, fed into uh, an updated versions of the doc. Okay, so, well, I think, uh, uh, thanks for the two questions are really important. Uh, the, the, the first one, uh, what we've done in the report on, on, on platforms is, is um, try, as I said, to understand if there are um, elements of platforms or, or even uh, complete platforms that can be 
uh, that can be used. So we are not recommending anything. We are just uh, setting criteria for uh, a platform selection. And we show that there are some platforms uh, which can be rather complete or which can be only part of that, that uh, could be available without being proprietary platform. And uh, we give for uh, the example of 1M2M, obviously, uh, but we give also the examples of, uh, of uh, uh, platforms coming from, uh, from open source, like uh, uh, what has been developed in the Apache uh, ecosystem, uh, which is largely applicable to to the IoT, or what has been developed in uh, you know, OCF for the um, uh, dealing with the uh, the semantic interoperability part. So uh, the, the, no, we don't make a list of platform. That was not the intention. Uh, we just are trying to uh, give guidelines for those who would like to choose platforms on where uh, they could be finding uh, the proper candidate, knowing that there is no ultimate candidate. Uh, amongst the criteria that will allow uh, the, the, the choice, there are many things. You mentioned uh, the approach of uh, minimum interoperability mechanisms of, of uh, uh, synchronicity. Uh, we, we have been uh, looking at this kind of, uh, of uh, criteria, mechanisms as criteria for choice. Uh, this is part of uh, what has been developed and, and I believe that we should continue to work in, in, in this direction uh, and the community will probably do that. Regarding your second question, I think I cannot be uh, answering really uh, uh, too much of that. Uh, what I can say is that the current uh, mechanisms of the STF is that an NET CSTF is attached to a technical uh, committee. And so the documents themselves are following uh, the, um, uh, the mechanics of uh, the, the technical committee, which means that in a sense, we are, we are requiring the comments of the uh, Smart M2 MTC for we've been asking that for all the documents uh, for the STF. This being said, we have also been uh, trying to go beyond. And so we've been putting uh, some of the documents for review in uh, AIOTI. Uh, and, and that was, uh, I, I believe, an important uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the, the, the feedback we could get from the community through AIOTI. Uh, I, I do believe that in this, and personally, uh, that's my view, I do believe that we, 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 could, we could go beyond that, but I think we have to find the proper mechanisms. Uh, and that, has, that is something that has to be discussed with the, uh, with the commission and, and Franck and Rolf may have uh, uh, additional ideas with respect to mine. Thank you, Emmanuel. Let's see if uh, there are other interventions from the floor. Hi, Pascal. Hi, Emmanuel. This is Rolf speaking. Um... Um, actually, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I think um, I consider it a very comprehensive and broad analysis uh, and knowledge gathering what you did over there. It's a very valuable work. Um, my point at the moment is, you know, how to convert that knowledge into sort of some guidance. Because, you know, if you see how much trouble governments have in order to develop, in quotes, a simple app, um, how much uh, sort of... Uh, um, challenges smart cities face or cities facing now putting more sensors in place and wanted to gather more data. Uh, so how to avoid basic simple um, simple mistakes, um, what, how to do it right, uh, how to, to analyze sort of um, um, trials which, which were put in place on a hot dog vendor which did not work uh, and how to recommend how no way you use open standards where to use open source in order to get a broader um, acceptance of technologies. What sort of ways do would you see in order to, to engage now with the communities, um, the different communities, because actually now in the after crisis, um, there's a, a big need for that. Yes, I think it's a, it's a, it's a complicated question, uh, Rolf. I, 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 you, you, the... I, never, I never ask simple questions now. <laughs> Well, you, 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 the question you ask is, how can we continue to do the work? 
and how can the IoT community organize to 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 really address this kind of uh, of uh, high level analysis of the of the issues? And I think there there are many uh, activities that are uh, that are done. I I could answer for, on behalf of the STF. I could answer uh, for for instance also on behalf of Create IoT, where we've been uh, uh, developing a number of things. I, I also uh, think it's in in my view uh, the 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 role of the uh, of the CSAs to continue uh, to, to continue in this direction. Maybe I can add uh, to this comment, Emmanuel. Yes, exa it's exactly this, and the CSA have the role to push. Uh, not only to do to to to, pro, to to provide the guidance, also to push the the, the other research project to do the same, so that actually uh, we can leverage the previous results. So we should leverage this result, build on that, and uh, go into promoting. Do exactly what uh, Rolf said: provide guidance and things like that. Learn about this, and then uh, probably uh, feed into next STF. Okay, things like that, so that actually we always get. The, the synergy is super important, and this is uh, where we, we can easily do the create the synergy with the CSA, uh, have close collaboration with uh, HC STFs. Uh, we have it uh, de facto because the people uh, are the same, but we can enhance it. And I have to say, uh, in Create IoT, I was not aware, sorry, Emmanuel, I wasn't even aware of what was an STF, okay? I just learned like the, the last two years about this. Okay, so it's something very important, and we should make me make more, uh, let's say, dissemination about the fact that uh, there is an organization, Etsy, that is trying to uh, federate all those work, and uh, if they're federated, so let's use it. Okay. Thank yeah, you well, very much. I, yeah, I no. think I, I can uh, I can react to that also by saying that uh, uh, it. It may be making sense uh, to to uh, to continue the work in a, a structure that would look like an STF, uh, but probably uh, something more open than uh, than, than uh, the one that has been uh, presented today. Uh, but this is something uh, on which the um, uh, the discussion should be should 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 be done between uh, I don't know at see the commission whoever is involved. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Emmanuel. I want to add that uh, on the basis of the last comment on what Rolf said and Antonio said, uh, this has been a little bit the aim of the things that we have also tried to do in the context of uh, work patch two of NGIOT, trying to synchronize uh, the different pieces in which we were involved, the people that were involved in Create IoT, people that were involved in NG five. The security cluster. We have been in contact with OpenDI and so on in order to bring the things together. And then, of course, the the work that Tetsi has done uh, is key here. And we want to try to push that, disseminate that, and try to narrow it down so that it can also impact a larger percentage of uh, of people. Also, because that uh, we have been discussing this many times that. Uh, European approaches to standardization, also in global standardization development organization, is key here. And uh, with Frank, we were at the ITU for a meeting in March, and we have also been discussing that. So that that is for sure. I think that we have still a few minutes if you want to have um, some other quick intervention. And uh, I want to give the floor if there are some other intervention, because the presentation deserves it. Maybe I should mention, Antonio speaking, that uh, uh, I am a uh, the liaison officer between AIoTI and SC41, which is working on uh, uh, Internet of Things. Uh, every single concern mentioned by Emmanuel Darmois, we have the same uh, at the international level. And of course, uh, we should promote uh, the result of STF uh, 547 there. Okay. In particular, uh, when it comes to interoperability, I'm going to submit uh, a proposed study for uh, security and privacy in the IoT systems uh, with exactly the vision which Emmanuel has stated there. So we have a very much a practice and interoperability vision of it, okay? So it's just, sorry, it's, uh, I took a, take advantage to make this announcement, but this is uh, actually being done within uh, the Interconnect project. So uh, it's H2020. And uh, again, uh, I like to, to, to make sure that this work will uh, be uh, related, will synchronize with the STF works. Thank you, Antonio. Any other intervention from the floor?
is two minutes to four. If we don't have uh, any other intervention from the floor, uh, I leave the last word to my colleague uh, Francesco Caparelli from Instituto Italiano Privacy from NGIOT, who is an organizer of this uh, uh, webinar with me. Francesco, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Pasquale, and thank you, everyone, because uh, it's very useful to have uh, this kind of confrontation among us. And uh, I would really like to thank you all for uh, joining us today. And uh, we will have another webinar on the 15th. And uh, yeah. I hope you will join us too in the next webinar. So thank you very much. And thank you for your attention. I would really like to thank Emmanuel Dermois for his contribution. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. And thank you very much, everybody, all of you who have intervened. Thank you. And the registration will be available on, on our website soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.